Gilbert Van Rijke for Sal photography is reaching a large segment of nature-oriented North Americans and Europeans through numerous public displays and publications in such well-known journals as the National Geographic, International Wildlife Magazine, Natural History, Equinox, Canadian Geographical Magazine, Outdoor Canada, the Atlantic Salmon Journal, Trout Unlimited. Various governmental agencies have also shown keen interest in the work. Canadian Federal and Provincial Departments of Fisheries and Tourism, and in the U.S., the Fish and Wildlife Service and various environmental agencies. Today, the ecosystems of our Great Salmon Rivers are threatened by man's impact on their fragile watersheds. Gilbert feels that the health of migrating Atlantic salmon serves as a strong indicator of the overall quality of man's environment. He has made it his cause to use the salmon in their confined river habitat to illustrate and communicate the fact that the special macro world is very much a part of our world. Now we will watch a related video, and this is done by Gilbert himself. Well, Marla, I'm uh, taking you and uh, our guests onto an underwater trip here. Most of what you will see is underwater uh, rivers. In this case, it's fairly nearby. It's in the uh, Shubenacadie River. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking here at a um, smallmouth bass, which is uh, protecting its uh, spawning site. And here we have some other uh, small mouse bass in, the, in a nearby location that are yet unattached, uh, about to find a partner to go spawning also. And uh, this is a, uh, a species which is um, introduced by uh, men in this area, so-called uh, exotic species. It's, um, it's a very well-known fish in the uh, Shubenacadie uh, uh, River system. And here we have fish that are at the present time running the rivers in very large numbers. This is the, uh, the Gaspero, uh, which is an ocean fish, or a so-called anatomous uh, species, which comes from the ocean to spawn in our rivers and then returns to the ocean again versus uh, um, resident fish that you will see a little bit later on. But these fish, they, uh, they enter our rivers every spring in very large numbers. And then we have the freshwater eel, which uh, spends its life in the freshwater systems of, uh, of the province. And at, at about the same time as the ocean fish come in, then the adult uh, eels are returning to the ocean because they will um, have reached maturity and are going to the Sargasso Sea to uh, mature again and then the small um, glass eels are coming back in, in great numbers and grow to maturity again in the rivers. But uh, the, the two uh, species are sort of meeting in the rivers and uh, it's a timing which nature has uh, uh, planned because uh, when there is a lot of food because of all those gasparos that are coming in the river, the, the eels have uh, a chance to, to forage and go uh, before their long journey to the Sargasso Sea starts. And here we have uh, the eels that are eating um, a dead gaspero. You see a whole school of gaspero in the, in the, uh, in the background milling around. So are you saying that the eels uh, go to sea to, to spawn or mate? That's, they, they, uh, like they have reached maturity. They are so-called cathedroma species, which mm -hmm. is uh, um, the other way around, where the gaspero comes to spawn in the freshwater. The eel goes to the ocean to spawn in the saltwater. How come, how come the salmon come to, the, to freshwater to spawn? What's the uh, the salmon is the same, is, is also an anatomous species, an ocean fish that comes to spawn in the rivers. And uh, we'll come to the salmon in a moment. Okay. Right now we are looking at what is happening right now in the, in the springtime mm -hmm. river. The, the waters are warming up 
and here we have uh, the lily pads that uh, that are in the in the silt of uh, ponds. Mm -hmm. um, you have big roots there, and then the roots are uh, new, new buttons are coming up, and the plant grows, and uh, um, and the leaves are rising to the surface until you have the familiar uh, surface pad. impression of the lily pad. Right. And in that same habitat, of course, we have the amphibians, which, uh, which is a resident uh, species, the, uh, the, the leopard frog in this case. We have a number of uh, species of frogs, the bullfrog and the leopard frog, and the, the spring peepers, for example, also. They are making this very nice music at uh, this time of the year. Those are also. very, very small frogs, aren't they, the little peepers? Yeah, yeah. they're very small ones, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then we have other species like uh, the skater, which is a little beetle creature, which uh, lives on the, um, on the surface of the water um, at, at a time. I think it, it, it may be the mating time of, um, of those species. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the location where I shot those images is here. This is uh, in New Germany, um, the big eddy pool below Morgan Falls. That's that is nice the site there, that you're yeah. looking at there. And then we have here some of the uh, flora that you see along the rivers. This, in, in this case, it's the mint plant. And then we have the, uh, the purple violet. Mm -hmm. Little beautiful little, little plants that are all living in this proximity of the river. You know, the water that gives life to plants and, uh, and animals. Yeah. And here we look at the, uh, the this, this is a site where, where air gets into the water, it oxygenates the water, and uh, this is important because all those species that live there, they need oxygen to breathe like we breathe air. Right. You know. What happened uh, to this This field is a, here? This is a, an interesting species. This is also an anatomist fish called the sea lamprey, and uh, they are coming into our rivers as well, and uh, they suck themselves with oh, what this fish is doing. Oh, and there you see okay. another one which is fighting. Oh. They're, they're very territorial fish uh, when it comes to their spawning site. And uh, here you have, uh, this is the spawning site where, where the fish have been sucking themselves against rocks. Mm -hmm. They pull out the rocks and they make a, a depression in the river. And as they are doing this, all the little larvae of flies and so on that are sticking to the, to the stones are coming Oh, and then little and fish can... like the creek chop that you have here, they, they are attracted by this food right. that is provided by the activity of the, of the lampreys. Well, how and do you dare get in amongst the, the <laughs> lampreys? Aren't they, aren't they dangerous? Well, you know? no, they are, uh, they are not dangerous at all. Uh, they, in, in the sea, they are um, sucking themselves against fish. And uh, here you have quickly um, a freshwater eel moving in there. I'll, I'll explain that. But uh, uh, this fish is uh, the uh, the sea lamprey is coming for the sole purpose of spawning yeah. in the river. Mm -hmm. and they don't eat anything, and they don't suck themselves against fish in the fresh water. Uh, and here you actually see the spawning uh, happening there, uh, where the fish, the one fish, sucks himself against the head of another, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and then they come into this. Uh, uh, orgasmic trance mm -hmm. in which, uh, uh, during which the spawning happens. And uh, this goes on and on, and the fish, these fish actually, they spawn out and then they continue in that, uh, they continue that behavior until they kill each other. I, I always thought that the, the female had laid her eggs in, the, in amongst the rocks and then the male would, would come and well, uh, different species have different ways of doing it. I know? see. And uh, in this case, uh, the the eggs are laid and disappear into the uh, uh, into the gravel of the river, and uh, are incubated. Here they are spawning again. But the uh, after two or three years, the the tiny uh, um, larvae of the lamprey eel come out and uh, reach a stage where they, where they enter the, uh, the water column and then return to the ocean and uh, live their adult life there. And when they reach 
maturity, they come back uh, to spawn in the river and die. Okay. Here you see how they are, this fish is uh, sucking himself against the stone and trying to get it out, to pull it out. And you actually will see how, the, how they pull out uh, a rock. I think it's going to happen pretty now soon why now. Is he, why is he doing that? Well, it's a, uh, uh, it's a behavior um, they, they have in their genes imprinted how their behavior should be when they are at the spawning site. You know, it's a fantastic thing, and uh, eventually the, the, they die, and then the dead fish become food for other fish again, and, and also for the tiny little uh, offspring that is in the, uh, in the gravel. Mm, you know? Right. And, but uh, nature seems so cruel in that way. And, you know, salmon, it's the same, same idea with the salmon, isn't it? Once they spawn, that's right. then they die. Well, uh, not with the... Uh, the there is a, a fair amount of survival with the Atlantic salmon, but the Pacific salmon, they all die. I guess that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Is that, that's the sockeye, isn't it? The, the sockeye, yeah. yeah. Sockeye and, and, the, and, and the Chinook and the, some of the other species also die in the Pacific coast. The Atlantic yeah. salmon, as far as I know, is the, uh, is the one that is a multi-spawner. Here we are looking at some of the uh, very specialized aquatic plants that only live in this, um, in this small channel that is a river, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it tells us also how fragile this, this world is, because if the, the, the quality of the water changes, then uh, the uh, conditions for all those specialized plants and, and, and fish and, uh, and insects and so on, that all are interdependent, sort of disappears with it. And then we, uh, we, we just have to make sure that that doesn't happen, and uh, we have to become very conscious in, our, in, in what uh, we do on, on the lands and agriculture right. and, and how we, how we uh, um, change these uh, systems. And of course, water is uh, most important to us. It's, we, we are ourselves 98% 90, water. That's, <laughs> That's right. Like all, all life forms uh, heavily depend on the quality of water. And uh, the fact that all these creatures are in the river uh, and so many varieties of them tells us that that water is of life-bearing quality. Mm -hmm. you know. So this, we're still looking at the Shubenacadie River here, aren't we? Uh, this is not the Shubenacadie oh. River. In this case, we're looking at uh, the St. Mary's River Saint Mary. in Geisler County. Now that certainly looks fairly... It, it, lo it looks like you're in an aquarium. It's, it looks fairly... Very nice much so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I bring the camera up to, to the subjects uh, when they appear somewhere, and uh, it's not, uh, although there are a lot of species, especially at this time of the year, you can see a lot of fish everywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, it all depends on, on, uh, on what phase of the uh, seasonal uh, life cycle you're, you, you're in. Uh, here we have Atlantic salmon that come in after the uh, um, anatomous fish, the, uh, the gaspar and the shad. You will see shad coming a little in, in a little while as well. But um, first come the gaspar and then the shad and then, at, uh, and then about at the same time the salmon come in and uh, then they the gaspo disappear and the uh, and the shed and uh, um, it's a it's features that are um, continuously ongoing uh, and one benefits the other. Mm -hmm. you know? So several species can um, intermingle without oh, yeah. any problems. Yes. They, they are not uh, they are not competing. Or not not no. territorial or uh, some th they are territorial usually to their own species. And uh, if you have um, resident species that are territorial, uh, there are few really that are um, that are territorial un un unless you have a special event like spawning going on. Right. Then they become territorial. But uh, the, usually the uh, anatomous species and the freshwater species are not, uh, are not territorial, as far as I know. But here, you have a, here you're looking at an Atlantic salmon. And, uh, 
And then here we are looking at a different species at the same time, in the same location actually. Those are shad that are moving in there. Mm-hmm. What's their, what's the characteristic of shad? Well, shad are uh, similar to the, uh, to the gasparol, uh, a species that is of the herring family. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, they are a larger mm -hmm. herring. Uh, about the largest that we have here. And then if you are down in the Caribbean, for example, the largest herring species that you can see there is the tarpon. And the tarpon is a fish that goes up to 200 pounds. Right. But it, it looks very much like a herring also, mm -hmm. uh, like these. And uh, here, here we have a lot of oh. eels. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the eels are sort of interested in the, in the dome port of the camera. They see themselves reflected right. in that uh, in that lens, and uh, so they they come and look at it. And then uh, in between, you're you're looking at the um, uh, the cabbage. Uh, it looks like cabbage almost, but it is the um, lily pads that are growing up. Mm -hmm. And then if, when you turn the camera upwards, then you see the trees. That's interesting. Looking through the surface out. Yeah. You know? And here we have, uh, again, gasparol that are moving in, an, in, a, in an, uh, a constant stream of silver fish. Um, and uh, they are looking at the diver, and they are sort of fascinated with what that is, and that's why they are milling in front of the camera there, you see. And uh, now you, you don't have to dive deep always. This is only a, uh, three or four feet deep, yeah, sometimes only two feet. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but there you see all the species that are uh, um, besides salmon and gaspo and, and eels. Here we have little white fish, uh, shiners, and um, uh, little perch that are, there's quite a lot of different species that, are living, uh, that live in our rivers. But uh, do you suppose there, there have been many species that, that haven't survived the, um, different changes that man has, has put the environment through? Uh, there are species that probably uh, in certain rivers where uh, the quality of the water is uh, affected by acid rain or by yeah. agricultural runoff uh, fertilizers or uh, silt that, that chokes up the, uh, the spawning areas, mm -hmm. uh, where certain species have disappeared. Like, for example, we see a lot of the trout going in many rivers. That's sad. And that is a, that, that is a, uh, a, 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 a gradual process, which uh, um, in some rivers uh, is more than in others. It all depends on the chemistry of the water of the particular river. Yeah. But here we're looking at salmon in the St. Mary's River again. They are just holding, and the fish are... They're very uh, uh, used to my presence, and they allow me to sit right in front of them to take to take a picture of them like that. You know, That's, just, uh, I'm surprised to see that because you know wh when you try to catch a, a fish with your hands, they they're quick yeah. to get her off. Well, they are. Um, they they get used to your presence after a while. Um, they have to apply a certain amount of patience to, uh, to get them used to your presence, but mm -hmm. once, once that relationship of trust is established, then, then you have no problem, uh, then you can look at them, just ad admire their beauty, uh, or you can, you can watch with the camera for, for behavior and, uh, and, 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 and shoot images like we are looking at here to show people that are they don't have a chance to go underwater, mm -hmm. what it looks like down there, you know. But you could not get close enough to touch the fish. They, uh, sometimes they you can touch them. Oh, they uh, allow you to do oh, that? Oh, yes. Sometimes you can touch them. They, uh, they touch each other, and if you uh, touch them gently at, a, at the right moment, mm -hmm. when, you, when, when that can be done, then it's no problem. And they'll, they'll, uh, I, I can touch the, the salmon, for example, stroke their heads and their sides. Really? Or, or I have a big turtle sitting on my sitting on my arm, and uh, normally he would bite, but after a while he gives up that uh, reaction, 
to a frightness. It's sort of a defense reaction, mm -hmm. you know. But, so if the fish becomes used to my presence, then or the the, uh, the creature, then uh, then he won't bite anymore, and then and then he becomes a pet almost. Did you encounter some turtles in this river? Oh yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. There is a. Um, I, I have some turtle footage on this uh, on this uh, video, but uh, uh, I don't know if we will have a time to see it. I mm -hmm. hope so. But uh, okay, we have a lot of other things to look at here. Like That's these are some of the uh, uh, little uh, seed parts of of particular plants that live there. And he here we are in the uh, very small habitat of the of the little fish that are living in this water that is probably only about two feet deep. You know. And I I am there and and I, I am hitting bottom with my with my belt mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just have to push myself off a little bit but the camera picks it up as a uh, as a little world that it really is you know that's right and here we have the little the, all, all the plant life like for example in the rivers you are usually uh, at the groundwater level so at groundwater level this is what what is also called the aquifer this is a uh, groundwater level that is usually under the ground, right. but in the rivers, it is visible. You see the water running, and uh, so when there's little water running in the summertime, for example, then the groundwater comes up, and then you get springs, and the springs are bringing in cold water, and cold water would kill most of the plants, uh, but only particular plants will survive in the cold water, like you will see, he like you see here. This particular uh, water uh, plant is is characteristic for areas where you have springs mm -hmm. in the river, and uh, this is where the fish hide in the summertime when the when the water becomes uh, really uh, warm. They go there to cool off and uh, sort of to sort of feel like shade. yeah to feel better. Yeah. So I, I, I'm still not clear why the fish. Um, change their environment to spawn. You know, if the salmon live in salt water, how come they can't just stay in the salty? Well, water? it's a uh, it, it's a behavior which uh, which has a uh, long history of of the natural world uh, behind it. Uh, it goes back to the ice ages, and uh, the salmon. Uh, is a fish that has been uh, always close to the cold water and uh, uh, in this type of environment of, of running water and ocean water. Yeah. You know? And uh, it, it somewhere in the, in the history, it, it became a, uh, a habit or it became a successful habit to spawn in rivers because you have uh, Oxygenation. You have a protected habitat, right? And uh, and so they uh, this became a survival feature, and a survival feature became so dominant that it became a characteristic of the species salmon and also of a number of other species. And so they uh, developed this through evolution, and uh, they have gone through different phases of uh, physical appearance. Also, you know. Very interesting. So here we are looking at a school of uh, Atlantic salmon that are very, very trusty, uh, trusting my presence, and I'm right up to within a few feet of those fish, and they are behaving totally um, unaffected by yeah. my presence, you know. And that's like being a fish in an aquarium yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What, yeah. What the, where does the term macro world come from? Uh, it depends on how big the world is. You know, our world is the uh, it, that looks out as far as we can see on the horizon. Mm -hmm. That's our world. Now, if you have a uh, an insect world, it's very small, macro world. I see. You know? Okay. But the macro world can relate also to uh, to a salmon because, in a way, the salmon uh, world is a small, very small world also. It could also be referred to as a macro world. Mm -hmm. But usually a macro world is referred to as a small world of creatures that are living in a very restricted little world. Okay. You know. 
But here we, uh, this is a beautiful clear water of some uh, salmon pools in the Gaspe of uh, the region of Quebec. And uh, these are um, fish that are uh, accumulating in a large pool. And I go there, and the fish are so used to me, I can just move uh, around them. I swim right under them, and they just uh, stay in that position and, uh, and tolerate my, my uh, uh, behavior. That's a, that is amazing. And that is uh, it's something that uh, this summer I'm going to do a film on uh, how these creatures uh, accept my presence. And I think it brings a human interest factor, which uh, which people will like to uh, to see, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, there's a different, just gives a different perspective on on behavior of wildlife. You know, when when we are peaceful coexisting with them, mm -hmm. then they will accept our presence in amongst them. But when we, as soon as we are doing something that uh, that uh, relates danger to them, then of course you spook and they will uh, become, their behavior will become apprehensive. You know? Of course. It stands to reason. Yeah. They're beautiful fish. And uh, so on the river also you have these birds that are, uh, this is a merganser. Uh, it's a, a bird that uh, lives off fish. And, uh, so of course, he stays handy uh, for the water. It, you, you, you will see it sticks its head underwater, and in oh, this case, that? it's diving, and it, it swims. It's far more maneuverable than fishes are. Look at that. And it has absolutely no problem catching anything at once underwater, and it feeds off fish. And in a small, in a, in a salmon pool, these, fi these birds are capable of uh, picking out uh, the little fish. This is myself here. Yeah? This is a friend of mine who took... Oh, yeah. This picture of myself uh, when I uh, was swimming in that salmon pool there, yes. And uh, it's a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward this summer to uh, do a lot of it again. Yes, I bet. Yeah. It looks like a lot of fun. Yes. Maybe some, sometime I'll get into some d underwater diving, too. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think a lot of people would, uh, would enjoy that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that is... Uh, um, it, you know, it doesn't do anything to the, to the species un unless uh, too many people would go in the same spot, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> uh, we, ha we are r running out of time today. Yes. But I would like to thank you very much for joining me today on uh, this segment of In Harmony with Nature and also the viewers who, who joined us today. So it's been a real you. pleasure to be on your program, uh, Marla. And... Um, I hope that uh, more programs will uh, follow after this one. Thank you.